I'm Sheila Kofer, and I'll be discussing endoscopic type 1 laryngeal cleft, or deep interretinoid notch repair. This is an endoscopic view of a type 1 laryngeal cleft, or deep notch. A right angle probe is used to palpate this area. Once the laryngoscope is in place, a vocal fold spreader is placed. We do this with the handles of the spreader facing up and use a rubber band to hold it in place. We use a platform suction, seen here, to retract tissue while we are using a carbon dioxide laser on 4 to 6 watts continuous mode. Recall that when using a CO2 laser, all operating room personnel need to don laser safety eyewear. In addition, careful protection of the patient with moistened eye pads and surgical towels to wrap the skin around the face. In addition, the oxygen levels should be maintained below 30% when using a laser. Intermittently during the procedure, if needed, an endotracheal tube is placed in order to perform catch-up ventilation. The mucosa of the interretinoid area is ablated in order to create a raw surface area. We then take a 4-0 PDS suture and an endo endolaryngeal needle driver to throw a deep stitch at the apex or distal aspect of the laryngeal cleft. The needle can be bent manually in order to facilitate the throw. Here we are using an earwax curette in order to push our knot so that it is tight. At least four knots are thrown and then the suture is cut. The tails will be facing posteriorly. A total of two to three additional suture are placed and tied down. Once the stitches are placed, there is often some tightness of the superglottis and therefore quite often a superglottoplasty is also performed. Uh, submucosal injection of steroid solution. Here we're using triamcinolone, 40 milligrams per mil, is injected into the area epiglottic folds and scissors are used to make area epiglottic Cuts. Key points in interretinoid notch repair are the patient is maintained with spontaneous respiration with intermittent intubation as needed. Use of a CO2 laser to create a demucosalized surface. We then do placement of three to four endoscopically placed suture, starting at the apex of the cleft and proceeding superiorly. It's important to perform a supraglottoplasty to release tight area epiglottic folds if necessary.